These are subdivided into regions, each with its own military headquarters, commanded by a brigadier. Each county under the command of a region is called a Tactical Area of Responsibility, or TAOR, and has its own headquarters. Communications for both regional and TAOR HQs are the responsibility of two National Communications Signal Brigade. The brigade consists of six regular squadrons, which provide the mainland telecommunications infrastructure in peacetime, and the five TA regiments and one TA squadron, which are mobilized in an emergency. It also handles the TA responsibilities of a special communications regiment. The government has today announced that all members of the Territorial Army and all reservists are to be mobilized immediately. On mobilization, a signal squadron becomes responsible for setting up and maintaining communications within each region. This starts with the regional military headquarters, which is equipped and manned by a communications troop. This particular regional HQ has been tailor-made to house a large joint forces staff, as well as representatives of the police and emergency services. It has food supplies to last for several months, and will survive nuclear and chemical attacks. The equipment being installed in the Comsen will provide secure communications throughout the UK military and civil networks by means of telephones, teleprinters, and a data computer. Radio communications are available on the Mould VHF network and on VHF, HF, and UHF. These provide links to other headquarters and to the Navy, RAF, police, and Coast Guards. The squadron commander is based at the regional headquarters. Sorry, Rooney. If anybody wants me, I'll be in the ops room. From here, he controls the deployment of the signals units under his command and liaises with the Joint Forces staff to ensure the smooth running of the regional communication setup. Have a walker. Sir. Take this immediate signal to the concert, Yes, sir. Thank you. Immediate message from Chief of Staff. Thank you. Fox right in Immediate message, don't worry, just like this, I want to At the same time, communications for each of the TAOR headquarters within the region are being installed by detachments from the TAOR troop. TAOR HQs command the units responsible for military operations within each county. There can be up to seven of them, depending on the number of counties each region contains. The Comsen provides telephone and teleprinter communications on the military network, as well as telephone connections to the public service lines. Radio links to the regional military headquarters and to the key points of the units under the command of the TAOR are by the Mould network and by HF radio on the district net. Tom, the brigade is going to deploy a technical headquarters in this area right. to cover the operation in walking. Now we'll require an MST to be deployed uh, with HF, Mould and a dust terminal. We want it in and established by 1800 hours this evening. Do you foresee a problem with that? No. Have you any idea how long they're likely to be deployed for? It's quite a difficult one. I'd anticipate no longer than three days. The Mobile Signal Troop, or MST, deploys its detachments to provide HF radio communications to temporary HQ command posts, like this TAC HQ. The 
In some cases, VHF radio is also available, giving access to the mould network. Where would you like the mould, sir? Just sit down there, please. Hello, Alpha 1, this is Bravo 3, radio check, over. Alpha 1, uh, OK, over. OK, out. Right, that's all working, sir. OK, thanks very much. Bravo 3, this is Alpha 1, send Sidrep, over. Hello, Bravo 3, this is Alpha 1, send Sidrep, over. Roger, Sitrep, as at 1300 Zulu, 18th of Feb, serial... You are breaking up. Say again, serial one, over. Say again, serial zero, zero, one, five, seven, over. No, you are unworkable, over. Roger, wait out. Cool smoker, this mold shot's rubbish. Can you sort it out, please? What's the problem, sir? Interference, and uh, it keeps breaking out from the other end. OK, sir, I'll see what I can do. Hello, Alpha 2-3, this is Alpha 1-2 Alpha. Staff at my location having problems with Victor Gold means. Can you investigate, over? Zero, what's your problem, over? Interference and broken transmissions, over. Zero, Roger, wait out. Sir? I heard that, I'll sort it out. Hello, Zero Delta, this is Zero. My son Ray will investigate your problem, over. Alison, we've got a problem with the mold communications between the TAOR here and TAC HQ here. I want you to take your MIV and insert it in the area of Claygate Commons. That's at grid 910-537. Grid 910-537. I want you to do that as soon as possible. The mould insertion vehicle, or MIV, carries the equipment needed to augment the mould VHF network. This operates through antennae erected on permanent sites across the United Kingdom. These can be destroyed by enemy or terrorist action, or, as in this case, they may be too thinly spread to provide effective communications over the area where different headquarters have been set up. Either way, additional antennae have to be inserted to thicken up the network. Hello, Alpha 2-Zero. This is Alpha 2-2, radio check, over. Alpha 2-Zero, OK, over. Alpha 2-2, OK, out. This will now become a permanent location for the MIV and its crew for as long as the additional antennae are needed. That big. Okay. Radio, telephone like and teleprinter communications are now fully operational at regional and TAOR headquarters. Colonel, we have something of a refugee problem. David. Yes, sir. There's as many as 3,000 refugees moving northwards into Camberley. Can you help? I'll check. The reserve section from KP208 is a possibility, Colonel, but it's right on our western boundary. Uh, perhaps it's an idea to check with the Brigadier whether he wants us or Hampshire to do it. OK, you plan. I'll check with the Brigade. OK. Thank you. I'll get back Thanks, to you. Thanks, Colonel. Colonel Beamish for the Brigadier. One moment. Brigadier, Colonel Beamish on the phone for you, sir. Thank you. Hello, David. How can I help you? Sir. The civil police have a problem with refugees in Camberley. Do you want us to deal with it or Hampshire? I think you can deal with it. OK? OK, sir. David? Yes, sir? We're dealing. Would you get on with it? OK, sir. Hello, Victor 1-0. This is 0. Fetch Sunray. Over. Victor 1-0. Sunray speaking. Over. We have reports of problems with refugees at grid Charlie, you are to detach your reserve section to assist civil police at this location now. Over. Roger out. 
Could you get that Sergeant Marshal? I've got that, sir. I'll decode the grid. You get the reserve section ready. OK, sir. Right. That's done, Colonel. Right. Alex, can you inform TAC and I'll send the sitrep off to HQ? Yep. Can you send that flash to headquarters, please? Yes, sir. Hello, Zero Delta. This is Zero. For your information, the reserve section from Kilo Papa 208 has been deployed. Roger, so far over. Roger, over. To assist civilian police with refugee problem in area of Camberley, over. Roger, out. Sign. Flash, mate. Corporal Hamilton, flash message. Some territorial units, like 39 Signal Regiment, have special responsibilities. It provides communications for the Government Communication Centre, operating from tactical communication sites like this. An immediate message for the Gibraltar debt. Okay. At the heart of the special communication site is the message centre, where messages are processed before being transmitted to a tactical high-frequency radio base. Immediate for Gibraltar. After further processing, the message is transmitted by high-powered radios for worldwide communications to small field detachments. These are dispatched by various means, including helicopter and parachute. Another unit which contains a nucleus of paratroopers is 63 Signal Squadron. It supplies communications for the territorial SAS in whatever area they may be called into action. The role of 40 Signal Regiment is out of area operations. The regiment is based in Northern Ireland. The main function of the regiment is to set up the communications needed for relief organisations, POW and refugee camps, hospitals, temporary airfields and other contingency operations. In an emergency, units can be deployed within 48 hours. The principal Royal Signal's role outside the UK is with NATO. Here, the new defence strategy is based on the concept that the principal threat to peace is from local or regional conflicts in Central Europe or the Middle East that spill over into the territory of one of its members. To counter this, the Allied Command Europe Rapid Reaction Corps, or ARC, has been formed. Its role is to contain or deal with a crisis until augmentation or main defence forces can be deployed. The Corps, which is commanded by a British general, consists of a maximum of four divisions drawn from the 13 participating countries. One of these divisions is British, one multinational, and the others national. Rear Support Command, which is established close to the port of entry, is responsible for the combat services support and the lines of communication. It can command as many as 11 rear support groups. These are the logistics headquarters of the participating nations. The forward support area contains the core main and rear headquarters and the headquarters of each of the four divisions and their associated brigades. Forward support groups, which are attached to divisional headquarters, 
provide the supply link between divisions, the Corps headquarters and Rear Support Command. The United Kingdom has been given the framework responsibilities for the ARC, including communications. These are provided by an area trunk system known as Ptarmigan. It operates through a series of switching centres or trunk nodes, which are linked by radio relay or satellite and can be accessed by formation headquarters, down to brigade level in the case of the British Division and divisional level with the other nationals. The responsibility for all the ARC communications belongs to two signal brigades. One brigade, whose three regular regiments are stationed in Germany, and 11 Brigade, based in the UK, with one regular regiment and four TA regiments. The regular elements of both brigades would be deployed from the outset of a crisis. But if the ARC was brought up to its full strength of four divisions, regular manpower would be unable to cope with the workload. The TA regiments could be mobilised and provide reinforcements. The situation is very much as I briefed you yesterday. Port of entry here, rear support command, arc rear and arc main in the east. Our task will be to deploy into the region, beefing up the existing trunk plan with our trunk nose going into this region. We'll be providing access to the RSGs here and also to an airhead in the north. SCRA coverage will be provided in the region of rear support command and also arc rear. We know that Rita and Zodiac are already deployed in the region and we have a task for our TII in the north. We could pick up a second task in the south. Meanwhile, 36th Signal Regiment have already arrived at the port of entry and they'll be the first communicators that we meet when we arrive in theatre. 36th Signal Regiment operates a secure trunk system employing Euromux equipment. This supplies the British Rear Support Group with its lines of communication to the port of entry. The system uses Triffid UHF radio relay equipment. The MUX vehicle contains automatic telephone exchanges and facilities for telegraph and data transmissions. OK, I've finished programming now. I'm just going next door to check the lines. Oh, then, John, see you later. Secure access to the Ptarmigan system is also available. Hello mate, this is AMC863, I'm just checking the Ptarmigan interface. Morning, Anne. Morning, sir. 33 regiments have arrived. There's their normal rail and vehicle stats. Can you fax them to TSEP as soon as possible? Right away, sir. Are they in the system? Yes, did you want to phone them? Yes, please. The access code is 7798630. Morning, Foreman. Major Malik here, 33 regiment. I've got four trunk nodes with me. Where do you want their troop commanders for a briefing and when? Yeah, 943-867. Okay, they'll be with you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Cheers. Recap, Bye. I want your trunk node node home in this area here. The trunk node home contains the switching centre for all voice, telegraph and data communications throughout the Ptarmigan system. I want all four of your radio relay along this ridge here. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you later. Right, I'll see you later on then, yeah. The radio relay vehicles supply up to three links connecting together the trunk nodes and providing access to static headquarters and mobile users. Wherever possible, the vehicles are sighted on high ground up to five kilometres from the node home, which is usually located in a village or farm.
the switch is the heart of the ptarmigan system. It acts as an automatic exchange, connecting subscribers to their destinations via the other trunk nodes located throughout the arc area. Start swinging smudge. Yeah, go back. Back a bit more. The radio relay vehicles are connected to the switch by either line or SHF radio, depending on the distances involved. Right, hold it there. Right, lock it off, we'll try and talk to them. Hello, switch. Hello, switch. Hello, switch 5-2. Yeah, mate, I've got the other end now. Uh, I'm going to put you all the way through, OK? Is that Alpha, then? Doing it now. Right, are you seeing that? Yep, that's OK. Right, um, I'll leave you to it. OK, thanks a lot. The node home also contains vehicles to provide power, stores, and electronic repair facilities. Go, I'm just taking this back to node command. Yeah, all right. I'll put your subset back, sir. The node command vehicle provides switchboard access for local subscribers and civil systems. From here, the troop commander carries out overall control of the trunk node by means of either the ptarmigan system or the multiple engineering order wire. Right, OK. Uh, can I have 40 litres of Benz, 20 litres of diesel, 20 litres of water and some fresh rations as well, please? OK, that's uh, 40 Benz, a 20 a diesel, 20 water, and fresh rations. Communications linking static headquarters with the ptarmigan system are provided by access nodes, like this secondary node attached to one of the forward support groups. A radio relay link connects the access vehicle to the trunk system. The multiplexer installation in the access vehicle provides the HQ staff with voice, teleprinter and fax access to the network. Local and civil access is handled by a manual switchboard. Matrix from Papa Zulu 638423 to Papa Zulu 648593. Come on, Roberts! Sure. Can you send this message in trace to the message center, please? Will do, sir. Yeah. One second, one fax for you. Right, thanks. If you took care of that one. OK, thank you. The non-British divisions forming the ARC all employ their own communication systems. To enable their static headquarters to access the Ptarmigan system, they're interconnected using a Tactical Interface Installation, or TII. In this case, Ptarmigan is being interfaced with the American mobile subscriber equipment. The interface installation is connected to the Ptarmigan trunk node by radio relay or satellite and provides non-secure voice and telegraph channel. Here's your cable. Thanks very much. As soon as I've connected it, I'll try and give you a loop and see if you can see it. I ran your cable and your other soldiers hooking it up. Single Channel Radio Access, or SCRA, allows mobile subscribers in British units to use the Ptarmigan system. A company on the left flank and the B company on the right flank together with... This is done through the VHF terminal mounted in the vehicle. It transmits to a radio access point known as a central and has a range of 15 kilometers when mobile and 30 kilometers when static. The only problem I have at the moment seems to be that 4RTR are not quite keeping up there. The central is linked to the trunk system by means of either radio relay or cable. 
The installation can handle up to 25 subscribers simultaneously, 12 of whom can talk at a time. Priority calls automatically take precedence. To evade detection, the central has to change its location every few hours. While it's on the move, its traffic load is taken over by another central. One of the features of the Ptarmigan setup is that it gives greater responsibilities to junior NCOs. This is because individual detachments are likely to be separated from their parent squadrons and troops for long periods of time, coming under the direct control of other headquarters. In any future conflict, when the reserves have been mobilized, the role of the TA Royal Signals will be vital. The majority of national defence communications and 25% of ARC communications will depend on their expertise. Just smudging on getting this mask up with Napoleon said that an army marches on its stomach. Today, it would be truer to say that an army marches on its communications. If they stopped working, the whole battle would... The training given to members of the Territorial Royal Signals units will ensure that nothing like that can ever happen, and that if the need arises, they will be able to take their place alongside their regular counterparts as equal partners.